Pull out the one below halfway. Then pull out your case far enough to reach the back row of boxes. My name's Paul Collier. Um, I'm the letterpress and typography technician at the University of Plymouth. Letterpress is um, an old um, form of mass production, an old form of printing, um, invented around about 1450s by Johannes Gutenberg. This workshop um, tends to work in the same way as it, it did back in that time. So by using these pre-moulded reusable letters and uh, made of metal and wood, uh, movable type, we can produce words and sentences and paragraphs and pages of text. This is a 500 year old process and it moves like a 500 year old process. It requires a greater degree of consideration when you're, um, when you're using this, mainly because there are no quick highlight and change sizes or typefaces like we can do on the computer. That's why technology has really pushed forward, is that we can change things in an instant. Here, if you set up a paragraph or a sentence, if you get it wrong or if, this, if you haven't planned your way forward through that, then you just have to take it apart and start all over again. Once you're there amongst it, really, because I know the layout of the case, I'm familiar with where all the letters are in the boxes, my mind tends to wander. Um, I'm listening to what students are saying in the room, I'm making sure their the body language is all right, they're not struggling with things, and, and bit by bit I'm putting my letters together. And I know, I, I know what it's going to look like, I have a vision of what it's going to come out like. I'm looking forward to, to seeing it, basically, and getting it, getting it finished. But the process is quite therapeutic. It's, you can calmly put this thing together piece by piece. And it's a very enjoyable process. I think uh, letterpress is going through, we're going through a revival right now. We almost, particularly this country in particular, they lost a lot and uh, jumped on the, the lithography bandwagon and just threw everything else away. The equipment now is becoming a highly sought after now. We we're in the process of people wanting to have this machinery and, and get hold of it and that's not easy now because it's difficult to find. Sometimes even harder are spare parts and uh, bits and pieces like that and it's, it's old school. It's all nuts and bolts and highly mechanical um, and that makes life a little bit easier for us really. Um, but there are one or two pieces on, on each bit, bit of kit that, that are difficult to find. That's just the way it is.
quality um, of image produced by letter presses quite sought after. The inked in depression that uh, is, is the characteristic mark left in the sheet by the letters is something that people don't see very often because of the, the laser print and the inkjet don't produce that anymore and that's the familiarity. So when they see this, it, is, it has the wow factor and I always like to see the look on a group when a group of students come in for the first time and I'm showing them how the room operates and how it functions and how they function in the room. It's very clear that they've not seen that before or they really get it, they really get what the quality of that, that is and it's something that you can't really reproduce in any other way. Um, it's that first look at the quality of the way that the type impresses into the paper. Um, it's very special. Digital age remove, does remove us from the tactile work, the more hands-on. Um, and I think there is a longing in our soul to get back to that, even if we can't. There is something about these places that people want to occupy and try out. Um, certainly as an art form, it is very appealing. It's very current now. Whether that will fade, um, I think it's, um, it's interesting to note that there are other universities around Europe and who are opening their own letterpress studios as we speak. That really tells a story there, I think, that uh, this is here to stay.